We have a Stipperuski here, folks. A Stipperuski. Thassa's Oracle is the name of the Stip. We're gonna try and build around that one. First trophy, yeah, third draft, first trophy. Seven and two on the day. So Time Twister doesn't actually play with Thassa's Oracle that well, because it shuffles your, your graveyard back in. Could help you build Storm for a self-brain freeze. I think I'm gonna take this Jace. Just drawing cards, huh? Hey, it's Asturiel, thanks for the sub, thanks for the two months. Remember the bonus point? Yes, true. If we somehow combine Thassa's Oracle with Oath of Druids, and no other creatures, <laughs> then that is the bonus point, yeah. Can we find Thassa's Oracle? Probably. If he gets opened, someone's probably not gonna take it, right? Unless it's like the only blue card in the pack and they're cutting blue for signals. So normally I'm keen on the channel, but I'm not sure how channel would fit in a Thassa's Oracle deck. Channel Sphinx's Rev. <laughs> Play Thassa's Oracle. Luteal Core gives us Devotion. Maybe that's relevant. Just more churn. Luteal Core could also set up for like um, Delve cards, Delve draw spells. I'm gonna take this D2 Derm. Are we doing this? Is this is this what it what it's come to? I missed the bonus point. You don't think oath wheeling? Oath almost always wheels. Nobody takes that shit. Is Thassa's Oracle a non-bow with Oath? Um, it doesn't have to be. Like, Jace can bounce the Oracle. Hmm. Kinda hate this pack. Throw a bounce in here, why not? You're curious on my thoughts between Supreme Draft and Regular Draft? It's just the difference between like Omniscience Drafting and regularly drafting a set. Dark Slick Shores is an option. I think we're gonna take this Signet. It's just a different format. I don't have any super advanced special thoughts. How do you feel between going between Legacy and Modern, right?
You had a lot of fun watching the Supreme Drafts? Nice. Yeah, our viewer numbers were really good for the Supreme Draft days. And I had fun doing them, so... Yeah, I hope they bring it back someday. Sometime. Dash Wheeling is actually pretty great for us with this Mind's Desire that we hypothetically want to cast. Oh, your brain is melting, though, or is this Mind Slavery? Our brains are always melting. Cellular degeneration. Oath did not wheel, but that's okay. Because we also don't have any other green cards. <laughs> yeah, Guys Busters. Guys Busters requested the stip, and now they're like questioning it. <laughs> they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. We'll find a brain freeze. We'll brain freeze ourselves. I like this fractured identity. Very much in our colors. Dogmas Bargain could get us there too. Wouldn't be a bad wheel. Mulligan until you find Thassa's Oracle and put it on the bottom, and then Oath always hits. Just don't play Shuffle Effects. It's cute. Thief of Sanity unfortunately mills the wrong opponent. It might still be the, the pick here, just in case we don't get an Oracle. Wish Claw, Claw Talisman is an option. Uh, Basalt Monolith can be a free storm count for Mind's Desire. So can Palancron. Save the Monolith. Which of these cards is the most passes Oracle-y? If we'd seen an early Skull Clamp, we'd have a very different deck right now, by the way. <laughs> Building towards Thassa's Oracle. That could be hilarious. I'm looking at Inquisition, Blightsteel Colossus, in case we get um, Tinker or Urza. And then here we have Turnabout, Him to Turok, Hollowed Fountain, Spellseeker. Let me just take the Hollowed Fountain. Turnabout's cute though. And then we pass Tinker. I know we passed Channel. We also passed Strip Mine to go with this Crucible. Could take the Crucible anyway. More card draw. So one way to win with Thassa's Oracle every time is to build like a super solid control deck that just doesn't have win conditions. And then when your opponent thinks you're about to deck, you get to win instead. And I think that's our plan right now, but we do kind of have this Mind's Desire thing that could happen. Lotus Petal playing well with Mind's Desire, but we're just going to take Teferi. Teferi draws a card. Teferi could also, like, give us multiple Oracle triggers. If we have to run it out early for whatever reason. Or if we hit it Oracle off Urza, you know. Lotus Petal would be great, though. Lordex certainly looks obnoxious. Ooh, I like swords. Emery does some nice self-milling action, but if you don't have the Thassa's Oracle in your hand already, you could you could hit the Oracle 
which is unfortunate. Let's just grab the swords to stay a little bit more controlling. Brain freeze is kind of perfect. Brain freeze is kind of perfect. Top two, otherwise. Top, high tide, both good ways of building storm count. Esper Storm. Who'd have thunk it? So right now all we're missing is the Thassa's Oracle. And then we're good to go. Do we take Thassa's Oracle over Black Lotus? I was pretty sure the Oath was gonna wheel. I love Chrome Mox more than most, but we're gonna take Frantic Search out of this pack. Spell, chart, of course. These are our options. I think I'll go with C spell here. Signet's, Signet's also in the running. Signet just making the balance much better. Spiral's almost good. It would give us another free spell, similar to Frantic Search, to just like juice up a Mind's Desire. I think Demir's Signet is what we want though. Interesting pack. Celestia Signet, Path to Exile, or we could just take Concealed Courtyard for some nice fixing. Yeah, we have a couple of single cards here that are really good at just like flipping our library over. Yawgmoth's Bargain, assuming we have enough life, and, uh, and Brain Freeze can both do that for us. The Signet certainly makes balance better. That's the nice thing about just grabbing more Signets. They make balance better and the, the Urza better. Just gonna take the fixing. Love this pack. So many good cards for us here. And for once, I'm not talking about Solemn. My eyes already draw always drawn to Solemn. That's the one that I want to take. But yeah, no, there's Narsa, Jace. Karn turns through some cards. We're just going to take Factor Fiction. I kind of wish that we'd grab that Gear Hulk. Factor Fiction goes through so many cards for Oracle. Man, all three on color signets. It's too perfect. It's too perfect not to take. I want to take the Sheldock Isle because it's so good. It's just such a good card. We're, we have so much card draw on this deck that Sheldox is always going to be turned on. I might be talking myself out of this Signet. Fuck! Yeah. Oh my god. We could have had like the best Academy deck ever. All the Signets we passed this pack. I think we're just going to take the Coalition Relic though. And yeah, Frantic Search on taps the Academy. Yeah, we could have had the Nut. Fuck! It's so late. None of those signets we pass wheel, right? <laughs> like, zero chance. 
even just like one more, we'd be close. We'd be really close to Academy Dank. Sure, condemn in the sideboard. Ooh. Yeah, I'll play Spiral, I think. Spiral would have been amazing if we'd also had the, um, the Academy. It was so close. Was so close to being correct. Even if we grabbed the Azorius Signet, I think I would have grabbed it. And Worn Power Stone coming around. Jeez. I don't know if we play it. I don't know if we play the Power Stone. Hey, there's Gear Hulk. Yeah, I think we play this Gear Hulk with Factor Fiction, Brain Freeze, Counterspell. I think it looks good. Swords to Plowshares, Gush. There's a chance Gush doesn't make the cut. It does seem good with Thassa's Oracle, though. If we really just want to, like, churn through the deck. Oh, Elspeth might be a way of getting back Oracle. Yeah, I'm not sure about the Cabal Ritual. It's certainly good if we play the Desire and the Yawgmoth's Bargain. And I think I want to play those cards, but we'll see. Once we actually get into deck building here. It might just be nice just for like building up Brain Freeze. Your Hulk Fractured Identity, not a thing. You can only flashback instance. Budget Manamorphos? Yeah, exactly. I do think this Shell Dog Isle is going to be great. We do have a lot of churn. So I think Basalt Monolith is better than Warm Power Stone in this deck, if we are playing Mind's Desire and Brain Freeze, because it's a free storm, like I was talking about earlier. And then Warm Power Stone is like really high on the chopping block. Cutting Gear Hulk is an option. Usually, if you factor fiction and then Gear Hulk back to factor fiction, though, you've basically gone through your whole deck. I'm considering cutting this Mind's Desire. And then just relying on, like, Yogmoth's Bargain to go through the whole deck. A lot of our decks are, like pretty cheap, so it's hard to imagine the Mind's Desire actually doing much for us. It's kind of hard for us to get a high storm count too. Whereas a storm count of like four is good enough for Brain Freeze. Do I count Bloom as land? Nah. Got the Banishing Light? Yeah, we could do that. And then if we're cutting Mind's Desire, I think we also cut Time Spiral. And the deck looks like this. The Gush gets a lot worse without the Desire in the deck. We can keep in Banishing Light over Gush. Oh, 
Oh, the Qual Reach will get flowers too. Hold on. So what's our main accounts at? For white, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Not counting Coalition Relic. So like seven-ish. It's okay. Blue is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Which is great. Only nine of those islands for Gush. And then black, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I kind of like going minus one swamp, plus one planes. And then it's like seven and seven, or eight and eight if you count relic. And then we just keep all the islands in there for all of our double blues. This is Oracle Stip. Take one. You don't get Cutting Time Spiral. Well, it shuffles your graveyard into your deck. So if our goal is to deck ourselves for the Asses Oracle, then it makes sense to cut the card that shuffles our graveyard into our deck. Do you get it now? You can obviously still play the card, but it is a little at odds with the plan A. This is a muffin delivery? I'll take a muffin. I'll take a muffin. You took a bite of it? Yeah. I'll still take it. Homemade? This is nice and warm too. Looks moist. Mmm, I got a muffin delivery chat. What have you got? <laughs> um, oh, that's delicious. Mmm. Absolutely tasty. Moist muffins, the moistest. Moister than an oyster. Describe taste. I mean, it tastes like blueberries. Hot blueberries. Very moist on the inside. And then the outside was brown to have that caramelized kind of crunch. And that sugary crunch. This Lotus Bloom is so much worse without Mind's Desire in the deck. I think you still keep it though. <laughs> oh my bad, Mio. My awful language patterns spreading. We have to get away. Hmm. That's tough, predicting which we're gonna need more, however many turns in the future. I think we take the counter spell. With the idea being that we might want to counter a lethal crater hoof at that stage of the game. Did I want to play less than 17 lands? No, that's why I played 17 lands. What do you mean? Our curve goes up to six. Do you not want all the hit lane drops? The Warren Fish, thanks to the sub, thanks to the 14 months there. 
Warren says, News alert, Ninja Attack Wound 7. Oh my. Oh my. Jesus. If only we were playing one less land, then we wouldn't be horrifically flooded. Guarantee we'd have the perfect distribution of spells to lands with just one less land in the deck that we 100% would have drawn, right? Mana to blow up the Lotus Bloom before my main phase if they want to. Doesn't look like they wanted to. Yo, my orange boy is okay? Yeah. He keeps trying to like lick himself through his cone. Like he's got his cone here, you know? And then his he'll like reach his paw to like try and lick at it. <laughs> And do that. He gets it off in a few days, though. We just have to send them a picture of his eye. And if they're like, yeah, that eye's better, we can take the cone off. I guess we can hit the Skyclave, get a 3-3. It's not the worst. Taking that. Uh oh. Six mana could be trouble. Is trouble. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just take the three. But I have a backup plan here.
I've also not played my land. It's probably better. It's probably better to hold my land. They don't discard a card, but... Also, who cares? Talisman for a Teferi and then bounce our fucking Talisman. Not here, obviously, but... Yeah, the sixth lane could be important if we need to Fact of Fiction plus activate Sheldock Isle on the same turn. I guess they're giving me my Talisman back. Kinda cute. We can blow it up now. The chain, the chain. Pretty good about this spot now. We have a 3 3 to block the two X's. We have a counter spell underneath Sheldock Isle. Next turn, we can run out the Course of Portal or the Urza or the. or both. Probably not doing both though. I think we're gonna still be holding up the uh, the C spell. I don't think this Mother of Runes matters because the Urza creates a colorless blocker for us. Yeah, for sure, JC. I don't. I don't know if Hull Breacher had a uh, had a big influence on whether or not High Tide was playable. Actually, Speaker leveling the fuck up. Note that the Mother Runes can now fizzle to Fairy's ability. Still should have served. I think we hold it. We could run out to Fairy and still hold up Sheldock Isle. I don't want to have to tap the Construct for mana, though. We'll be putting that into the situation. Yeah, so now we have 14 cards remaining. Of those 14 cards, 
We have one copy of Brain Freeze and one copy of Thassa's Oracle. And we're drawing two a turn, and we've got Urza activations, and Teferi's about to cantrip. I think we're in a really good spot. Yeah, Spirit coming on in. I'm tempted to activate Urza just to mill a card out of the deck, but if you hit the Thassa's Oracle on the opponent's end of the turn, then you're really sad, right? We're not going to do that. We essentially have this game locked up. Yeah, there's that. Okay. Again, not trying to bounce one of their cards because I don't want my card to get. I don't want the down tick to get fizzled by Mother of Runes. Note that Jace does add to the devotion for Thassa's Oracle. So currently, the Clearing to Fairy. Yeah. So currently we only need to get down to six cards. Unless we want to be super proof against instant speed removal spells, but I kind of feel like if they had a sword, they would have pointed it at Urza by now. Yeah. I guess they figure if I'm brain freezing myself, I have a win. Necessarily funky, not necessarily at all. They might have been like really close to scooping anyway. I certainly look like a Thassa's Oracle deck too, huh? They probably put me on either Yogg's Will for the win or, um, or Oracle. Maybe they thought that I was brain freezing them, and they just didn't want to show me more of their deck. People scoop to that a lot. I don't want to board and condemn, even though they're fairly aggressive. Because then Mother of Runes is like kind of good against condemn. Mother of Runes, like Sword Splashers can answer a Mother of Runes before they get to a chance to untap. Is the difference there? I figured they're going to be applying pressure to my life total so Yagma's Bargain becomes less good. I'm in danger.
Search for Tomorrow has been suspended. One thing I hate about Teferi is that it does just counter suspend cards. It's not going to come down in time to counter the search, but... Definitely a frustrating interaction to be on the other side of. You spend like four time, four turns waiting for your Ancestral Vision to resolve. Your opponent just like plays it to Teferi. I don't think we need to shock ourselves to run out of Talisman. I don't think that really benefits me. And Talisman down quicker. It's kind of a late game card. Where do I find this game online? If you search for Magic Online, you'll get there. If you are new to Magic, though, I actually recommend you try out MTG Arena. So I just Google MTG Arena instead. Eases you into things a little bit better. And it's a free-to-play client. Magic Online, what I'm playing right now, is older and decidedly not free to play. I think we have to Teferi bounce that and then just like hope we hit the lands for Fractured. I shouldn't have played my land yet. I might draw Sheldock and then like really hate myself. Another hero, how lucky. This is actually an absurdly good draw. We can Basalt Monolith into Coalition Relic before we balance. And then we don't have to discard anything. Mana Sweeper. Having the Basalt Monolith, Monolith in play is the same as having it in hand, too. Because three, ma three mana to untap it's the same as three mana to cast it, right? I have a Bribaz. <laughs> right, Ray I'm saying that there's no downside to having the Monolith in play. So it's free. It's free to run it out. Obviously, I played it for a reason, right? I agree, Blue Man. This song is pretty good. We're talking about real niche scenarios, Mike. Whereas we had like a we had a reason to cast it, right? Go, my little cat legend. Revive in with Supreme Vintage. Yes, yeah, I people really like that format. They get their tracker back. I 
they're not. They're just answering for me. Sure. Our draw needs a fact of fiction. Maybe I'll talisman for fact of fiction. Ooh. Can you do anything spicy with two tutors? So if we de tutor for frantic search. And we should call it Talisman for Brain Freeze. It's like not nearly enough, right? The cheese win is to just like get a planes here. I might do it just to save my soggy noggin. This way the Elspeth doesn't get to get back Pride Mage to pop more of my shit is the real benefit here. And then next turn we can tal Talisman for Fact of Fiction if we want to. I would not say that this cube is significantly different from the last, the last one, the last vintage cube. It is different. They, they made some tweaks, but Oh yeah, that's a good point. Elspeth would bring it back with a 1-1 one, one counter. The Pride Mage? No, you're right. Yeah, it wouldn't die. A little short now. Did I talk about a whole Breacher? Yeah, at first I thought they were doing it just because people were whiners. But then somebody said that Hull Breacher was bugged. So, if the card's bugged, it makes sense to, to pull it. Alright folks, do we go for it? I think we do, right? Fact of Fiction only mills 5. And if the Fact of Fiction finds us draw spells, we can't even really cast them into the spirit. So the Tithe Taker would have made our stuff cost one more on the opponent's turn. That's kind of, kind of what we gotta fire it off right now.
the card they replaced it with is bugged. <laughs> well, god damn it. Well, then it doesn't make any sense. Maybe it was just from people whining then. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense to cut Hull Breacher from Vintage Cube for power reasons. We've had Notion Thief before, right? Hull Breacher was nutty in Supreme Vintage because it was like a draw seven dot format. And you could get multiples of them, so it's just like very consistent that people had it. But there's only one that isn't even opened in a normal eight person pod. Jace is driving up the devotion count here. Eh? Round one. Two Oracle wins, two Brain Freeze self into Oracle wins. Stip fulfilled, yeah. We were lucky to get it, right? We were lucky to have the Oracle open to pass to us. But it seems like we built around it fine. There's a lot of drawing cards and treading water so we can go for the kill. No bonus point, though. I mean... <laughs> Other druids would have, uh... Not improved this deck, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think I, I would have gotten the bonus point. Yeah, thanks for the match, Alex Jones. Hmm... It's a little slow, huh? If this is a control mirror, then this hand is like amazing. But if you're facing anything else, I think you got a mull. This hand does something a full turn sooner by having Banishing Light on three, and then Urza can potentially at least have some kind of board presence. So it's a little bit better than the last hand we were looking at. Not a lot of better, but a little better. My, uh, oh, there we are. My arm actually got caught on my desk. Does anyone understand why they took Hull Breacher out? They said it would make for a better gameplay experience or something. Nonsense. Nonsense is why they took it out. Arbor Elf being held up there kind of makes me think that they're sitting on Cryptic Command, which I am pretty okay with. Do I have a favorite card that's not quite good enough to play? I mean, I want a Legacy Open with fucking Solomon in my deck. I think when my cards aren't good enough to play, I just play them anyway. I think if they want a Cryptic Counter, a Factor Fiction, that's probably fine. And then hopefully slamming Urza here isn't too bad.
Yeah, some kind of seven mana something, huh? Uh, okay. Not what I expected. Man, what if there's Storm and we get to use, like, Brain Freeze <laughs> to just, like, power through them? Build off their Storm. Is there anything different with my microphone today? There is not, Tarad. What sounds different on your end? dying. The more damage we take from Palancrown, the worse that this Yawgmoth gets. Fractured Identity is a really good one to have on a Shuldock Isle. Oh man, I caught my fucking sleeve again. There we are. Nice little bit of power. After my opponent's draw, the Shuldock's turned on too. I think we ch chill a turn on Yawgmoth, so I don't think we're in some like super rush. We could technically play it this turn while also holding up Counterspell. But I think my opponent's the one that's under pressure right now. I think we can afford to be a little reactive. Oh wow. Yeah, alright. <laughs> I'm excited. What you got? Please not time walk. Note that High Tide works for both players. question is, do we let them pop off with this palancron, or do we just counter it? I think I'm just supposed to counter. There's so much that could go wrong, right? Like they might have Eldrazi in their deck and have the brain freeze just be worthless. Resolves. So this is the dangerous part, right? We're definitely brain freezing in response to this Mind's Desire, but again, <laughs> if they have Eldrazi in their deck, it's just all gonna reshuffle anyway. So it's correct to freeze them. 
but we'll see if it does anything. Very often, these green blue decks will play like an Eldrazi. Oh, nope, they're scooping, sweet. <laughs> we have to use the storm to our advantage, see? Or is it before Brain Freeze? Why? It was already lethal. More than lethal. So, we have, a, we have like a couple of relevant disruption spells, right? In our whole deck. Could balance their hand. Counter spell's obviously good. Swords could maybe hit Palancron, depending on how much mana they have up the first time they play Palancron. You can like respond with the untap on the stack. Decided an Eldrazi. They might not have it. They might just not have any Eldrazi in their pool. Might just not be a thing. I kind of want to bring in Hero Blade Hold, just to be like a single card threat. It's not very Thassa's Oracle-y, that Hero Blade Hold card. But I kind of just want to like jam it and like have it be the clock. What's our record? Our record is good. I think we're up around. I think this is round two. Up a game in round two. Yeah, how do y'all feel about Hero? Eat a removal spell? I don't think blue-green plays very many removal spells. Is one of the reasons I think it's kind of good. Why is this a gush deck? Uh, a few different reasons. The main one being... Oh, I, sorry, I can't show the deck. Well, in your stream decker, you can look at the deck list. We did a Thassa's Oracle Stips. We're trying to win with Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle relies on you having an empty library. So having a free draw spell that pumps up the storm for Brain Freeze on top of putting cards in your hand for Frantic Search is really, really nice. And then you can always just cast it. This is another instant for Torrential Gear Hulk, potentially. This hand might be slow for the matchup, but I do like having Lotus Bloom in the opener. Yeah, Gush is certainly not a bad card, but it needs to be in the right deck. There's a whole lot of considerations. You gotta be playing a deck with islands. Drawing two cards has to be better than having two islands in play in your island deck. There's a reason it doesn't make the cut a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad card. Uh-oh. Oh, sure. Oh shit, what up? Bounce would be pretty nice. Right about now-ish. Hey, Dr. Cheese, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 30 months. Willie's 2003, thinks the sub, thinks the eight months. I scream, you scream, we all scream on Caleb's stream. Yeah, you know it. I 
Alencron coming in. Untapping Devoted Druid. They have another play. Didn't need to untap Devoted Druid. Got that value, Garrick. turn instead of the Urza, because it would have made Balance still a live one. Hmm, Garrick Ult doesn't quite kill yet. Actually might matter. Oh wow. Yeah, I think if you Yogmoth's bargain here, they just fucking murder you. They just like pop ult and attack you for as much damage as possible. Play out the portal instead of spinning Urza. Spinning Urza does reset the top of my library though, which is nice. Cash in Jace to bounce the Palancron and clear the Garrick. That might have been a better line. They do a little bit better job of buying time. Since Jace is gonna die anyway. We did get some value out of the, the brainstorm though. Am I dead to overrun? I'd be surprised. Is 7 plus 5 is what? 12? Plus 3 is 15. And then negative one plus three is two, right? Gets blocked by Urza. Next turn. This is how I expected their turn to go. Duck Isle on the stack, which you got, opponent.
I think their last card might be Cryptic, and that's what we're seeing these tanks. So I think we're a turn late here. We could put a Thassa's Oracle on the stack and then respond by brain freezing ourselves to mill ourselves for nine. But then we go to nine in the library and then Oracle only looks at four cards. Maybe I'm supposed to attack the Garrick. Maybe I'm supposed to activate Urza. I think we boarded out the Basalt Monolith. I think the only thing that Urza hits that really does it for us, that gives us another turn, I think the only Urza hit would be, um, would be Balance, right? like so close to having this work <laughs> if we had an academy right if we had an academy then frantic search would just get us there here man if urza if Urza had hit, hit the Fraining Search, then we would have gotten done tap three. And then we could have Brain Freeze plus Oracle. Yeah, I think that's still a little short. I think we're still good. I think this is still what we want. The Garrick is making me doubt the Hero Blade Holden. I'm gonna bring the Bullsaw Monolith back in. Balance also could have made sense. I like getting devoted Druid off the board. The card just makes so much mana. current Swords to Plowshares art compared to the Yargle art? Interesting. Interesting question. I think Yargle art is pretty OP. I can understand why they wouldn't use it in every cube. I'd use it in every cube. 
That art might be too powerful though. Not a bad five cards, huh? Fairly juicy. terrified of this Garrick. Hey, what's up? Okay. Interesting. Do we just have a win here? Eight mana available. Frantic search is free. Wish claw can tutor up something. What does wish claw get? Gush? Do we just wish claw for gush? One, two, three. Put Thassa's Oracle in the stack is four. Responds with brain freeze is five. Frantic search and gush get us four cards deeper. So that's like 19. Man, that's close. That's close, but like not quite there, right? Oh shit, what up? Five cards because you tutor out the gush. Yeah, that's fair. So 20 cards total. 20 cards total puts us at, um, <laughs> would put us at one card off from winning with Thassa's Oracle. That's nutty. We don't have the mana to Wish Claw for a Demonic Tutor, right? Wish Claw is three mana. Demonic Tutor would be another two, would be five. So seven, eight, nine. We only have eight mana. If we found the Salt Monolith, that would be a free storm. Yes, turtle power. The D2 is in the graveyard anyway. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, I think we're one card away from the sweet win. I'm gonna think about it a little bit more. Yeah, the Basalt Monolith in play, exactly. Yeah, that one. If we drew Swords to Plowshares specifically, that would be plus one Storm. That seems kind of unlikely. Maybe I lead on Frantic Search and then try to decide what to do after that. The thing is, Gush bouncing lands back to your hand is so good with Frantic Search. Kind of makes me want to tutor for the Gush first. Lotus is not next turn. Lotus is two turns away. Balance is an option. It's just so not cool. <laughs> we also have to discard down to two cards if we balance. I 
guess we can run the J sound. Let's frantic search here, and if we find either Swords to Plowshares or um, Gush, then we can win this turn. Okay, we didn't. Does Coalition Relic change anything? No, still a mana short. Oh, why do I think I can play this Jace? I can't do that. I can brain freeze myself, though. That's kind of real. Signets are minus one mana. Yeah, if I if I found a signet off of the um off the frantic search, then that would have worked. If we'd found a signet there off the frantic search, then we would have had a win. The coalition relic was one mana too many. Remember that if we're going for the the kill, if we're going for the kill, then the t then the tutor kind of has to find gush. So if we found gush, uh, a swords of plowshares, or a signet, then we could have gotten there. Never played Oxygen Not Included, nor have I heard of that. The reason you wouldn't activate Secure Tribe Elder is if you cared about having the lands left in your deck for whatever reason. Yeah, bummer. And here we are with the Thassa's Oracle in hand. Oh well. You know what they say, live by the Oracle, die by the Oracle. We could have chilled on the Brain Freeze. We had certainly built up a, a nice mini storm though. And it was gonna be hard. It was gonna be hard for us to get there. After dumping our hand. It have been real tricky. And then you're discarding the Jace. You think Jace Bounce past Storm next turn would have guaranteed victory? Um, I mean, not necessarily. They have counters in their deck. <laughs> what do you mean guaranteed victory? 
they were tapped out. We had an opening to resolve some stuff. One, they're a storm deck, so they can just kill us too if they get to untap. So like going for it, giving ourselves a chance to win that turn is really really good. And then two, yeah, they're playing cryptic and stuff. They have they've kind of spells in their deck, so not letting them untap, potentially draw into it, is also quite good. And even if we draw into our cards and don't get there, then we're still sweeping their board and we get to keep our Jace. Those are all good things. We also didn't get... We, it's, not, it's also... We weren't getting Lotus Bloom next turn either. Like, it was still suspended. All you're getting is an extra land drop. What spells did I play that turn? I did have 8 mana. We used 3 mana for Wish Claw Talisman, right? And then 2 mana for Balance. One card short? I mean, we weren't a card short, we were, we were short on mana, right? The draw for the turn mattered? I, I don't get it. If you're tutoring for Gush, then you have plenty of cards. You're not card short at all. You're mana short. Oh, you're saying the one card for turn, and then you don't you don't uh, need the one more storm if you just draw an extra card. Sure. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I just think guaranteed is a strong word for all of the for all of the, the risks that I've already pointed out. Yeah, I, I get it, FPS. I talked through that line. I already did that math. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think Jace bounce the uh, Elder loses to like anything at all. Whereas the line that we chose gave us a chance to win that turn. And yeah, it's weak to um, them having Brain Freeze in their deck, but we hadn't seen Brain Freeze yet. I think I Shock Self and get my Fof on here. If we get to untap with Teferi, then the Rift Wing is just countered. It's pretty nice. Well, not necessarily Usarian, because they did use the Tutor, right? Foffing off in front of all these people. Oh shit! We got an LSV raid. Welcome, folks. Welcome, raiders. I hope LSV's stream was sweet. We're currently in the middle of a Thassa's Oracle step. We have a very controlling Esper deck here that tries to combine Brain Trees plus Thassa's Oracle to win at the very end. Brushing up on the strats, getting ready for the weekend. I love it. I kind of like taking the three card pile just because we have this Frantic Search. 
the Demonic Tutor lets us find Thassa's Oracle is the nice thing about grabbing the other pile. But I guess Wishclaw Talisman can kind of already do that. Just like giving them a talisman. Let's feed this one with Storm Tendrils with no black mana. Oh man. Truly is getting ready for this weekend then. Playing on the hard mode. God, hands like this. Hands like this, I don't want to actually do math. I just want to start comboing. I just want to do like, gosh, frantic search, brain freeze, all that jazz. But we don't have to worry about counters. The Riftwing's getting countered just by the Teferi passive. I think we can chill. I might even run out both these signets. Now that we've drawn the gush, we don't have to worry about discarding the frantic search. God, and we have counter spell up. It's so good. If they don't do much at their end of turn, we can untap the basalt monolith and get access to three more mana too. And then I think we're just very close to winning. Oh shit! What up? Hey, Death Sea. Thanks for the sub. It's eighteen months. Merry Xmas, Merry Xmas to you too. Cheers, friends. Well, that's probably worth countering. Yeah, the Teferi passive getting suspend cards is so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious from the other side. Well, do we feel like we have to do anything here? We're at like the same spot we were last game, right? Where Franny Surge and Gush are both worth five cards each with Brain Freeze. So it's 19 cards, assuming we don't draw into something. I'm just gonna pass. I'm just gonna pass. Give it one more turn. Untap this Basalt Monolith. Untapping the Basalt Monolith just means that like pretty much anything we draw into is gonna give us that last storm that we need to lock the game out. Oh, the third devotion from the Teferi? Yeah, maybe that makes the difference. Meh. Oh shit. Well, this is like the worst thing ever. I think we let that resolve. There's only one counter spell in the deck. Maybe I gush in response? I don't think so. I think we just use Wishclaw, Wishclaw Talisman to go find um, Banishing Light. I think that's my plan. Can I go for it now? What do you think it is? We don't have a Thassa's Oracle in our hand. We can't brain freeze ourselves and win with Thassa's Oracle if the Thassa's Oracle's in our deck, right? Fracture? Yeah, Fracture's probably better than the Banishing Light Hum. And then we can cash into Fairy for the Talisman back, but I don't think I want to. And having to Fairy might be the best. Hmm. Well then. Well in that case, let's just win. Let's just win the old the old gameru scheme.
Do we even need the talisman? I mean, I guess I might as well. I don't think we even need to do the fastest oracle hold priority trick. We'd also run out Urza here too, tap the Wish Claw for mana. Yeah, and Urza also generates. And provides two more devotion. We could have actually milled them this game, but it's like way sweeter to win with Pass's Oracle. It's also part of the stip, so you know, you might as well. <laughs> might as well win with the old stipperoo scheme. You know what would have been kind of cool in this deck? Sun Titan. Then if the opponent answers the Oracle, it would be like a cool way to get it back, and then it also plays well with Teferi. I kind of want to cut this Yawgmoth's Bargain. This is probably like the best matchup for it. I just haven't wanted to cast it at all. Maybe I'm playing too scared. Gargle. I have come to bargle. They're definitely playing a pile of counters over there, right? Should we put in Mesmeric Fiend over Swords? We saw like a creature. Maybe we cut Balance. I love this Nitro Fun track, but it is loud. Maybe this is better. Maybe this is better volume. Yeah, um, Burial Rites would have been a sweet one. Lotus Bloom! We are short, of course. We are short the third mana we need for this relic to fix all of our problems. No chance we gush next turn, right? Just to get the relic down? Yeah, right, draw two lands immediately. <laughs> that disenchant, though. Oh man, now we can crack the Lotus Bloom to untap the Basalt Monolith. So good. Let me see those cards! Interesting Wrath of God, after they just, like, saw my whole deck. If they wrath away my Thassa's Oracle, then I won't have any devotion to win with Thassa's Oracle. Oh, they're stuff casting back balance. Hmm. It's possible I committed an error, but then they go down to- Oh no, they're, they're flashing back. Disenchant, sure. 
I was gonna say, but then <laughs> if they flashback balance, then they like go down to two lands. It's probably not good for them. I want to get the Relic down. I also want to gear hold back this Gush, maybe. And then they have Wrath for my Gear Hulk, but then they lose their Thada Adele thing. Fairy Bounce my Gear Hulk. I think I'm just supposed to play the Portal. Get that rolling. Thought is bugged. How is Thought a bugged? What, is, what, what actually is the bug? I'm pretty sure they wrath this turn. Them snagging a signet out of my deck means that we're just that much closer to winning with Thassa's Oracle. Wish Claw Talisman? I mean, I mean they can take that one too. <laughs> I'd allow it. We have so many viewers. Thanks for that chunky LSV raid. No, not my signet. They're on a dig through time itself. Interesting. What's the highest spike in viewers I've ever had? I think it was when I was on the front page. I was on the front page for a charity stream. I want to save the Teferi. I don't. Want, I don't want to just play a Teferi and have it get like killed by Thada or Colonnade. Like we could play it right now and get the the Signet back. But does the Signet matter? I kind of don't think it does. Which makes me just want to like go Sheldock Isle on untap Monolith. I think that's totally fine. We can save Teferi for the kill turn. Last minute. I think like literally this morning. Oh 
shit, what up? Hey, Otter Slick. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 12 months. Our first anniversary to some good tunes. Hell yeah, Otter. Hell to the yeah. Now, if they've been paying a lot of attention and taking their time, they should know what's underneath the shell dock. Oh shit, what up? Hey, Fractal Cadence, thanks for gifting a sub to Carsa06. Congrats, Carsa. Oh shit, what up? Hey, WCar91, thanks for the sub, thanks for 15 months there. Yeah, right? Log on to Twitch, see Brain Freeze in hand. Feels good. Feels John Goodman. And it looks like the opponent is once again not rapping. Cryptic tap here. Oh, they're clicking. Interesting. Well, plan B. Interesting. Wasn't expecting them to take to ferry there. So we could fracture identity Demir Signet, I guess. That's worse than like balancing and then counterspelling it. We don't quite have enough blue mana to do that anyway. Yeah, very close. Very close to a win. I think we technically have it thanks to the Torrential Gear Hulk's blue mana. I'm a little bit worried about a counter spell on Thassa's Oracle. But they just took our Teferi. It's real easy to just like fractured identity identity this Vendillion click. And make it very hard for them to win. I think I'm just gonna do that. Let me storm count two. They're mana draining fracture identity, and we know their last card is Wrath. I think that just gives us a win then. So I think if the Fracture Identity on Click resolves, 
then the additional devotion from Click might have given it to me too. I don't know. I didn't actually math it out. But it seemed like a good strat. It seemed like a good thing to point a uh, Fractured Identity on. Even if we don't win with the uh, the Thassa's Oracle there, like we're very close to just killing them. 